Isaiah 58. Let's grow there. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Is everybody there? You know, we were talking about gatekeepers and watchmen last time we were together. Very powerful. That's one of the things that the Holy Spirit is raising up. In verse 6, would you read it with me? Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. That's every yoke of bondage. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked that you cover him. And not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring. What? Your healing shall what? Spring forth what? Speedily. And your righteousness shall, be, shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. How would you like the glory of the Lord to be your rear guard? Yeah. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, in other words, the things that cause you to stumble and bring you into bondage, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually. And satisfy your soul in drought. In other words. No matter what's going on. You'll still have abundance. And strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. From doing your pleasure on the holy day. In other words, people are doing their own pleasure instead of coming and assembling. And call the Sabbath a delight. In other words, it should be a delight when we assemble. The holy day of the Lord, honorable. And shall honor him, not doing your own ways. Nor finding your own pleasure. Nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. And feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's a phenomenal promise of the Lord. It's phenomenal. But one of the things he's asking us to do, he says, is this not the fast that I chose? What is he asking us? To fast from the world. It is called a world fast. Everyone say world fast. In other words, fasting from the ways of the world. All the ways of the world. Why? Because the world is known as Egypt. It has a Babylonian system. It is ruled by evil and wickedness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. World fast. Fast from the ways of the world. That's what he's saying. If you'll do that. 2 Corinthians 6, 14.
You know, so many times people slide back into the ways of the world and don't even realize that they're sliding in there. And it's a sim simple area, an area of attitude, rebellious, unsubmissive, all of these other things, forsaking to assemble. All of these things, people would rather assemble around the TV than assemble in God's presence. They'd rather spend their days in pleasures, but ungodly pleasures. There's a difference between that of the world and those who are not of the world. The reality has to come to a place where not only are we not of the world, but even though we live here, we don't want to be a part of its character a part of its precepts, of its attributes. We don't want to be a part of its wisdom. We want everything that you and I are fed by to come from the throne room of God. And everything. Not the ways of the world. Coming out of the world. He says this in verse 14, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why? Is an unbeliever... In the kingdom or not in the kingdom? No. Don't be unevenly yoked. You know how many people go out and get married to someone that's an unbeliever? And they were supposedly believers? And they're, they're looking at an arena that, well, I'll love them into the kingdom. Most of the time, that person that was a believer gets pulled out of the kingdom. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with what? Idols. Idols. See, the world has many, many idols. Many idols. They have sports idols. They have all kinds of heroes. In fact, their number one idol is themselves. He says, for you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people, if you'll do something. If you'll what? Come out from among them. Come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is what? Unclean, because the world is unclean. It is polluted, it is contaminated. What the world promotes... God demotes. Does everybody get it? What the world promotes, God demotes. And don't touch what is unclean, and then I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. You know, one of the things that we talked about before was the things that are sealed by God. Anything that is sealed by God is how you build God's house. Anything that is not sealed by the hand of God is not building the house of God. It's building it in vain. That's why we always have to go to the Lord and ask for his seal of approval on something that we're doing. That's why the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added and his righteousness thing will be added. It says, seek, what? Ask and knock. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. Amen. All of these areas, lean not on your own understanding. Well, let me tell you, the world leans on its own understanding. You know, one of the things that the enemy always wants to do is impart a flawed belief system into a believer. If he can impart a flawed belief system, one little area of a flawed belief system, it can begin to expand and it becomes a flawed perception. So everything that they perceive is flawed. And what it does is begin to promote rebellion and division and separation. But there's that place where you and I must always maintain, and it is a love affair with the presence of God. Always a love affair with the presence of God. So in this, he says, come out. In other words, it's time for a world fast. Come out from the ways of the world. In Romans 12,
one of the things that the Lord begins to rebuke is his own children that begin to act like the world. His own children that begin to act like the world. In Romans 12 and verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your re reasonable service, which is your responsibility every single day. Again, we've heard this before. It is our responsibility. If you did not permit, if you did not submit your spirit, soul, and body to, and flesh to the Lord today, then you're on your own still. Then you're on your own. Why? It's just like submitting your will to him. See, so many people just go about their day and never submit themselves to him. And they wonder why things happen. They wonder why things are delayed or there's always certain things that are interfering. And don't get me wrong. Welcome to the earth. Things do happen. Amen. And there seems to be interruptions. No matter what you do, you can't go any further. And, and, and then you begin to look for whatever can bring you further, but it's really nothing that's going to bring you further. It's only you and your denial of yourself that's going to bring you further. It doesn't matter what classes you go to. It doesn't matter how many churches you go to. It doesn't matter what you do until you come to a place where you no longer react according to the world. The Bible says, submit to one another. Amen? It says, in the multitude of counsel, there's what? Safety and wisdom. So all of these things, people begin to act like the world by doing their own things. And when we do our own things, we usually end up in trouble, don't we? One of the things the world loves to be is anxious. They love anxious. Woo, that spirit of anxiousness gets fed. You know what it's always saying? Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Sounds like a rice burner. Me, 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 me. In this anxiousness, anxiousness will kill people. Why? Because they do things out of God's time. Let me share something with you. It might be the right thing to do, but if it's not God's time to do it, does everybody get me? It might be the right thing to do, but if it's not God's time, it's the wrong thing to do. And so the world moves by anxiousness. They want to promote themselves, they want to be well known, and they want it now. No training. It's like giving a kid a set of keys. Go ahead. Can I, I can drive. I can drive. Okay, take the car. Bam. And they get in a crash. Because the world has a mindset that they can do anything with no instruction. No instruction. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't read too many instructions myself when I get things to put together. <laughs> but I always have spare parts. And it works. <laughs> and it works. My wife will testify. <laughs> because I'm led by the Spirit. <laughs> Verse 2. 12 two. Is everybody there? Do not be what? Conform to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, we're to renew our minds. Of course, you know, that, that means exchange your mind for the mind of Christ. Because your carnal mind can never be renewed. So what we're doing is exchanging our ways of thoughts for the way God thinks. So we want to think that way because we know it pleases him. So we live a desire to please God. The world does not live a desire to please God. It lives a desire to please self, not God. 
Self is always number one. But the Lord says, deny yourself. I'm telling you, we need to flip everything upside down and now you have the kingdom of God. <laughs> the world has an attitude of give me, takers, entitlements. People judge one another by race and everything else and color. That's according to the world. See, they still live in that arena. In the kingdom of God, there is no color. In the kingdom of God, there is only one race. The race of Christian, Christ-like. Amen? Don't be conformed, but transformed. In other words, there's a state of humbleness. It's not a state of pride. You know, you always hear on all of these things, yes, well, we're really proud of this and that. And No, we're not prideful. We're grateful. Amen. In 2 Peter chapter 2. The world acts in this way in verse 18. It says, when they speak great swelling words of what? Emptiness. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they what? Promise them freedom or liberty. They themselves are slaves of corruption, and they don't even know it. Remember, a flawed belief system is a flawed perception, so they think that they're free, but they're actually bound. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into what? Bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions, everyone say pollutions, of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the, the beginning. Many people have fallen into that. When a person backslides and goes back into the world, things are worse. It gets worse. It's harder to come out. It takes longer to come out. The transition is longer You've got to be willing to do whatever it takes. Amen? There are pollutions of the world. The world wants to defile you because you represent an eternal purpose and the world wants to pollute you or defile you to negate who you are, exchange your ID from the throne room from the eye, and return your ID from hell. Because you and I were born in darkness. We are offsprings of Satan's kingdom. And we are now born again of the Spirit. That's why you have to be born again. Or you're still a child of the devil. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, what does it say? Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, so many times people have blinders on because their, their, their distance of sight is only short-sighted. But if you begin to look and see into the world, you'll find that the world really stinks. It really is wicked and evil and there's so much pain and so much torment in the world. It is a terrible place to be. It is a terrible place to live in. Children losing their parents. Homes being destroyed. Addictions. Perversions and all the other things that the world, because the rule of this world is the most perverse afflicting people, influencing people to kill one another, to murder one another, to rape people, to rape children, to, to do all kinds of, to steal, to use. It's a terrible place to live. Really stinks here. When you really begin to see everything all the way through, I hate this place. I really hate this place. But I love the kingdom. 
And I love the people in the kingdom. And I love all people. And we want to rescue them that have been taken by the pollutions and corruptions and temptations and enslavements and bondages of the world and bring them into the kingdom where there's freedom and love and unity. At least we hope in some places. Mm -hmm. It says, don't love the world. In verse 16. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So the world itself is not doing the will of God. And those who live in the world are not doing the will of God. That's why it says we are to do the world fast. Come out of the world. Come out of its attributes. Come out of its character. Now, don't become a, a, a workaholic. Having kingdom business first and things in divine order. See, the world doesn't have anything in order. It's me, myself, and I. And the kingdom is God, 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 and God. Matthew 16. World fast. This is not world fest. It is world fast, okay? The world, those who live in the world, it's world fest. <laughs> In verse 25, Matthew 16, 25. Read, read it with me. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Losing your life. You know, people are so much in a survival mode. I want what I want, and I want it now. And there's no seal of the hand of God. You know, you know people, uh, people go to Las Vegas to get married and all kinds of stuff, you know, because of certain, in other states, because of certain marriage ages or whatever it may be. Let me tell you, the worst thing that you and I can do is go get married by the justice of the peace. Why? God's hand's not in it. If God's hand's not in it, it's whose hand's in it? The enemy. So if you've been married by the justice of the peace, I encourage you to get remarried under the hand of God. Hallelujah. In John 12. In verse 26. It says, if anyone serves me, let him what? Follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will what? He will honor. In other words, there's got to be an area where we want to serve. Why? We serve not because we don't gain, uh, not because we're trying to gain something. We serve because we love him. We serve because we love people and we have a desire that they become free. Service. Service to the king. We serve a king and a kingdom. We do not, in other words, laboring on to the kingdom. See, people get frustrated because they, they start laboring on to self instead of laboring on to the kingdom. 
then they want a raise. They want this. And they get all offended. My goodness, people do backflips if $2 is missing out of their check. Because they're still serving unto self and not serving on to the kingdom. There's the area where man in the world trusts in man. Amen? You and I are trusting in the Lord. No matter what happens, because his promises say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them out of all of them. He says that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. He said that your trials and tribulations are going to train you. Count it all joy. Because it's going to increase your faith. See, but the world doesn't look that way. The world lives on offense and regret. Does everybody get this? We don't live that way. And the one thing that we must begin to do is begin to recognize these things that try to infiltrate us individually. Amen? We've got to begin to recognize these things. Look at it. It doesn't mean that you won't get hurt. But don't let hurt come, become offense. Because then there's bitterness. And that produces a whole flawed perception. Hallelujah. Galatians 4. In verse 3. Would you read it with me? Even so... We, when we were children, were in bondage under the what? Elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth his, the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, meaning Daddy. In other words, this area of a personal, not only just personal relationship, but a relationship with God as Father. Father. See, still, the world looks at God as God. They think he's some, somebody looks like maybe Abraham Lincoln with a beard. You know, I don't know. Ready to beat somebody. <laughs> Bad kid. No, God is not like that. God is, a, a, his arms are always outstretched to us. He's a loving father. Even when he, we blow it, he never turns his back on us. Never. We turn our back on him. And then the enemy convinces us that we're not worthy enough to go to God. But he died for me and you on the cross, so he already saw us to be worthy. The world does not repent. They blame The world won't repent. They won't take personal responsibility. They do not repent. They blame. It's you that why I'm doing, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> People love blaming their pastor, let me tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> in, in this, we've got to come to an area where we start recognizing Amen? Recognizing these things. Listen, Jesus said, my home is wherever I lay my head. It doesn't matter where you are or what's what. If you're seeking truth, you always find Jesus and you will find freedom if you're really willing. No matter what. Even people who are serving the devil out there. If they're really seeking truth, they're going to end up finding Jesus. Amen? Colossians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Stop justifying and start recognizing. The world lives on justification. What if, what if, this, not willing to take responsibility. Blamers. That's the world. Blamers. Criticizers. Colossians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Verse 8, would you read it with me? Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the what? Basic principles of what? The world. 
And that according to what? Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Com Listen, let me share something with you. He didn't ask you if you felt complete. Because if we were going by how we felt, none of us would. <laughs> We'd all be bonkers. God is not the God of feeling. He's the God of truth. And people are still living about how they feel. Oh, I feel this one. Oh, I feel this one. Feel that. They're, let me tell you, they're the, they're the most dangerous people to be around. Because they believe their feelings is truth. And you know how many people have, listen, how many times have you heard from somebody about someone and this and that and ever, and you had this feeling, oh my gosh. This, and then you met the person and found it was all a lie. And you think, oh my gosh, I, I believed all this stuff about this person. It was, that's why you must always step away. Always step away. Why? Because you know an individual by fruit. Fruit. Always. Fruit. Not fruit punch. Fruit. And you are complete in him. Amen? Everyone say, I'm complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Amen? Again, we are complete in him. The world doesn't, they're still trying to find something to make them complete. We don't need to look for anything to make us complete. No matter how much you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you pray, it's not going to change your completeness in Christ. It may change your fruits, but it doesn't change your completeness. See, that's where people fall from relationship and faith in Christ to religiosity. Now they believe that their works are going to make them more complete. They believe that their more of their prayers is going to make them more. More of this is going to make them. No! Then you've nullified what Christ has done. Amen? And that's what religion does. It tries to nullify the power of Christ and go into the power of self. Is everybody okay? That's why we must fast the world. Amen? We're going to do a world fast. Hallelujah. In James 4. How many of you know God wants to free us? I mean, he wants us to live in such a freedom. Such freedom. You know, but no matter what's going on, it's like joy. Remember, what, what, what do we call the peace of God? What happens when the peace of God's on you all the time? Whatever. Amen? Whatever. When God's peace is there, his presence is there, it's always whatever. Why? Because you know Something's coming, it's going to work. Well, it didn't work the way I seemed. I wanted it to work. But I'm going to step back and let, because I know the Lord's going to take care of something else. It's amazing if you're really paying attention to the things that God is really doing and in the, in the divine interruptions in our life. It's like, oh, okay, well then, obviously I'm supposed to, well, this has been on delay. All right, I'm waiting on that. So, oh, you brought this across my, okay, I got it. All right. Thank you. I'll get this done. See, there, God has divine interruptions. There, there are divine delays. And many divine delays are to save your life. You know how many divine delays that's happened in our lives that have pre prevented the enemy from taking us out? Because of divine intervention. 
Amen. In James chapter 4, is everybody there? Hallelujah. In verse, and, uh, oh, let's, praise God. Start of verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires? Hello? For pleasure that war in your members, the desires of the world. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship with the world is what? Enmity. With, in other words, you become an enemy of God because you are a friend of the world. God's not your enemy. You're his. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace. Therefore he says God, God resists the what? But gives grace to the? Therefore submit to God. Submitting to God means submitting to everything associated with divine order. There's no skipping or jumping around. Amen? There, there's no jump from first step to 10th step. There's a divine order that God has. And that's when he says, submit to God and resist the devil. Because if you don't do things in divine order and protocol, then you cannot submit the, uh, resist the devil and he's infiltrated, bringing a flawed belief system. Now there's a flawed perception. And that's how many people get taken out. And moved out of God's time, moved out of his plan, and they think they're doing God's will. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And Matthew 13. Listen, the devil is the most cunning beast created. Amen? The serpent. He knows how to outwit a believer in a second. If you're not, in other words, if you're not in divine order, he'll outwit you in a minute. Divine order is essential. Everything is a protocol, divine order. Why? Because it is a military operation. Isn't this, this, isn't this what it is? Isn't this not a military operation? Amen. In Matthew 13, Ooh. in verse, uh, nine, uh, verse 18, Therefore hear the parable of the sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one, what? Comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. Let me share something with you. I don't care if you've been a believer 40 years or 50 years or 60 years. It has nothing to do with time. The devil can still do this. See, because when we receive something, it still can be in a nonchalant reception or a flawed perception of reception. So we get it. But he who received the seed on a stony place, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles or goes back to tradition of world ways, of reactions. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who re hears the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. But he who receives seed on, on the good ground is he who what? Hears the word and what? Un Let me tell you something. Hearing without understanding will produce a flawed belief system and a flawed perception. I've had people come to me and share with me about messages that I, I've 
preached on. And they had total misunderstanding of the message. Total misunderstanding. They couldn't tell. They couldn't tell whether it was of the spirit or of the flesh. Of course, they thought it was the flesh. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears and the word, hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold or sixty or some thirty. So again, on this, it doesn't matter how long you've been a believer, on your arena of perception, of reception, can affect you. You know, what is the, the word also tells us about many who hear, but they're, they're looking at a man and not re, receiving from the Spirit. Does everybody get it? They're looking at the person and not receiving from the Spirit. Guy is not speaking to you. His voice is. But Guy's not. The mind of Guy cannot do anything. It's carnal. But the Spirit is trying to expose and reveal tactics and strategies that the enemy is trying to bring bondage into our lives. Why? Because these are training sessions. We're not Bible studies. Does everybody get this? Why? Because it's a military operation. And until we come out of that religious state of being, of Bible study, instead of coming to training session, because it is military, it is military, it is military. It is not religion, it is not religion. It is military. And a military, listen, we don't, do we not serve the chief commander? That's why he's called a king. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 1. So everything that's going on in your life, every trial, every tribulation, everything that's going on, you're being attacked. Until you realize that it's an attack from the enemy and not an attack from your brother or your sister or anyone else, that the enemy is influencing someone. That's where we must always make what is unseen to become seen. I'm not saying people, some people are idiots, because they are. An idiot means spiritually blinded. So they're always being used by the devil. They're up and down individuals. One day they're okay, the next day they're nah, 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 nah. Why? They go by their feelings, and they go by the influence. And they lack God's presence. Lacking God's presence will promote worldliness. Listen, you can come into service 40 and 50 times a week and still lack God's presence. Because if your heart isn't there to grab what his heart, <laughs> then you're lacking God's presence. Amen? Is everybody okay? Where did I say to go, Second Peter? Second Pete 1. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 1. Let me look at this. Okay. Hmm. Let's start at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Is everybody there? And his divine power is given to us what? All things that pertain to life and godliness. Now listen. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to this life in godliness. That divine power is in his divine presence. It produces a divine character. Does everybody get this? And that divine character through the divine power will grant you divine favor. You don't have to hunt for anything. You plant seeds and things will come to you. See, because anxiousness is of the world. The reason why people hunt for things, run for things, chase things, instead of chasing the Lord, is because they lack divine presence. 
That's where the word says, those who wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. See, people waste so much energy and strength chasing things. When the word says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack or want. Why? He will provide all of my things according to his riches and glory. He makes a way where there seems to be no way if we will let him. Sometimes we just need to get our little blessed assurance out of the way. That means your butt. <laughs> Hallelujah. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by, the, by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers of the what? Divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. Many people have a lust affair. It's not really a love affair. It's a lust affair. Why? Because if it can't be done in divine order, it's a lust affair. It's not a love affair. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Hallelujah. In verse 9. Come on, everybody look at this and read it with me. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorrow, or sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to what? Salvation. Not to be what? Regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces what? Death. You know, there's a time when people are so sorry because they've lost things. Lost things. They go always go back, oh, gosh, I really remember when I used to have this and I used to have that and I used to. Forget it. You just gone to the past. We live from the future, not from the past. What is gone is gone. You can't change anything behind you. But you can sure change things that are before you. Amen? So there's that area where the world is, man, if you go around and you go, you go somewhere in the world and, and you go into a group where people are talking, they're always talking about themselves and what they've done. Always. They're always promoting them. Hi. That's worldliness. That's the ways of the world. Hi, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, well, I've done this and I've done that. Oh, shut up. Spewing all over us, you know. Get rid of it. You're not in that crowd anymore. You're not in that lifestyle anymore. You don't have to prove you. He's already pre-approved you. Amen. We've got to come out of the ways of the world. World fast. Yeah. Ephesians 2. You know, I'll, I'll never forget when I was told I needed to get credentials. I said, for what? And I was told because it would, the world needs to have credentials. I do want credentials. I could care less. <clears throat> then the Holy Spirit convicted me. And he said, for me to send you into places, the world's going to want to have credentials. So I went to a, a uh, got a degree in whatever. So I could put it on the wall. So that when somebody came into my office, they said, oh, you got credentials. <laughs> but it really didn't mean much to me. Because when you know him, that's all that matters. If you can hear him, you know him, you know that you've been called, you've been 
predestined already. You know who you are in him. There's your credential. You've been sealed. When you've been sealed by the hand of God, you're, that's it. What, what kind of credential? Let me show you my heart. You know? See, it's a new one. <laughs> Spirit tube. <laughs> you want credentials? Bakarao <laughs> shikarabakoso. But the world wants credentials. Amen? Because they want you to be proven by the world. Hallelujah. Where are we at now? Ephesians 2. Thank you. <laughs> In verse 1, would you read it with me? And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots or dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together. And Now let me share that. He made us sit together. He made us what? Sit together. We're all sharing the same seat. It's one big, huge seat. And we made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ that in the ages to come he might show his exceedingly riches and his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And by grace, grace is God's plan. You and I are saved as long as we cooperate with that plan. Amen. Praise God. Is everybody okay? First John chapter four. First John chapter four and verse four. Would you read it? You are of God, little children. And overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. We, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of what? And the spirit of error. Beloved, let us w love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Let's go to Galatians 6 for a second. Galatians 6, 12. Galatians 6, 12. Let's speak it together, please. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh... These would compel you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in their flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, come on, read it with me, by whom the world has been what? Crucified to me. And I to the world. Do you understand that we must come to a place where the world is crucified to me and you? It is on the cross. It's been crucified. We no longer desire the things of the world. We have truly understood that we have come out from the world, that we have died with Christ, we were buried with him and rose again. And we are not of the world even though we live in it. And that we don't, Walk according to the natural, we walk according to the supernatural. Our expectations are from the throne room of God, now nowhere else. 
Does nobody get it? Our expectations are from the throne room of God. Any other expectation will bring great disappointments. Our expectation is from the throne. Why? Because then you see something that God is doing through people. You know that it's God. And you know that it's either God influence or devil influence. But your expectation should always be from the throne room of God and nowhere else. Because man will always let you down. I will let you down. Everyone in here will let each other down. Everyone in here will make a mistake. Say something they shouldn't. Think something they shouldn't. Does everybody understand? But see, we go beyond those things. We go beyond those things. We don't get caught up in those things. We go beyond those things because the world gets caught up in those things. Why? Because our expectation is from the throne room of God. And now nothing else. And you know what? If you will keep that expectation, you'll never be offended. And your hurt will be able to rub, just move away. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is the world. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? So we need to crucify the world, don't we? The world should be crucified to me and you so we have a world fest, a fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of what? Them, they will want to promote themselves. They will want to promote themselves. Far be it that they volunteer for anything else unless it's out in front. They will be lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than rather than lovers of God and having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because they're just going to suck you in. They're going to suck you into the deception and flawed belief system which will promote a flawed perception. They'll just suck you right in. This is the area of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The world promotes same-sex marriage. The world promotes abortion. The world promotes death. The world promotes murder. In verse 9, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor re reveler, revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful to me, but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any back into bondage. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hmm. Let's go to Revelation 3. You know, one of the things that people of the world, they have, they'll speak anything. They don't care. They just, <laughs> all over. Revelation chapter 3. In 
verse 10. It says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the aisle of the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He tests. Let me share something. One of the things the Lord always tells us to see if we're still willing to do whatever it takes and if our heart is truly set towards him in everything. Are we still fighting for our lives or fighting for his life? In other words, we fight for his life to be expressed and our life to disappear. Revelation 12. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Yes. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ has come. For the accusing of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they what? overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in, the, in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. A what? Short time. Revelation 16. And we will close here. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The Lord says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So let's keep our garments clean and unpolluted from the world, untarnished. That way we must come out of the world, crucify the world to each and every one of us and do a world fast. Amen? Remember, the enemy is always enticing you to come back to its character, to its belief system, to its trust, and to its presence. Stay awake, stay alert. And don't get sucked up and caught up. But get caught up in the presence of God, living from the future and not from the past. And your expectation is from the throne room of God and nowhere else. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. For you are our everything, Master. You are our everything. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And let the character of Christ have preeminence in our temples that you would express yourself and that we would be your witnesses in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Be blessed.